So in this video, um, I'm going to talk about uh, anomers and the anomeric carbon. Um, if you, and I'm going to make this a short video, or relatively short, and this will be part one. In part two, I'm, I'll go into a little bit more detail about it, so if you need more information, uh, maybe check out part two after seeing this video. If you look at definitions for anomers and anomeric carbons, I think sometimes they can get a little bit uh, wordy and not make much sense. And I think there's just a much easier way to identify the anomeric carbon and, and, and talk about anomers. Um, and so for this example, I'm going to use uh, d idos and I have the structure in straight chain form here shown. And to identify the anomeric carbon, which is important when you try to uh, distinguish between two types of anomers, um, you need to be able to identify the anomeric carbon. Anomers are basically stereoisomers. And it's typically, um, anomers are typically assigned or typically talked about when you talk about carbohydrate chemistry. So really this is a specific to carbohydrates uh, mainly, at least at the level of introductory biochemistry. So the anomeric carbon um, is the carbon, and again definitions will be very difficult sometimes or very wordy, but really it's the carbon that's bound or has two bonds to an oxygen. It could be the same oxygen or it could be different oxygens. So for instance, if you look at this ox if you look at this carbon right here, um, that's not an anomeric carbon. Why do I know that? Because it's bound to, and of course carbons have four bonds, so they have four things they're bound to. It's bound to directly to a hydrogen, a carbon, an oxygen, and a carbon. And so that's not bound to four different or two oxygens. It's only bound to one oxygen. And in fact, most of the uh, carbons that you see in that structure are only bound to one oxygen. But there's one carbon that's bound to two, and that's this one, the first one, the one that's the, in this case, the carbonyl carbon. Notice it's bound twice. Yes, it's to the same oxygen, but it's got two bonds to an oxygen. So that is your anomeric, let's see if I can, that's your anomeric carbon. And so that's all you have to do to identify them. It doesn't matter if it's in the straight chain form or the cyclical form of the carbohydrate. The the um, process by which you identified is the same. And so now we're going to take a look at the cyclical form, which is really where the terms anomeric and anomeric carbon are utilized. Mm, people do talk about the anomeric carbon a little bit in the straight chain form, but it's really something we talk about in the cyclical form. So what I've drawn here now is the cyclical form of d idos and this can exist as two different anomeric forms, and this is one of the forms that's shown here. Uh, one thing to note is, for this to occur, one, the hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon um, attack the carbonyl carbon, or our anomeric carbon, to form a new bond. And I'm going to show that new bond in red. Um, Sorry, I had it in purple, but let me just draw it in red. So that's the bond that's formed. It's actually between the ox the hydrogens essentially lost in this process, and the oxygen binds to the carbon. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about cycl cyclization of the linear form of the carbohydrate into the ring structure. Uh, you can look that up on another video I've posted on YouTube. If you just look through there, you'll find one on cyclization of carbohydrates. I'll leave those details for that. But at this point, I've cyclized it. And the new bond that's formed that I show in red on the left is this bond right here. That's the new bond formed. It's the oxygen on carbon 5 um, as part of the ring structure now bound to the first carbon here. And if you look, you can see that there are six carbons in the ring structure, which is exactly the number I started with in the straight chain form. And carbon 1 is right here, carbon 2, carbon 3, 4, and 6 is outside the ring, um, hanging up the top. So to identify the anomeric carbon, we look for the carbon, again, that's bound to uh, twice to an oxygen, whether it be the same oxygen or a different oxygen. And the, carbon, and the anomeric carbon here is carbon 1, that one. Notice it's bound to the four things that it's bound to, because again, carbons bind to four things, is this hydrogen, the oxygen of the ring, the oxygen on that hydroxyl group, and the carbon number two, 
which I don't really have a carbon to underline there, but it's right there where I mark through. So those are the four things that it's bound to, and notice it's bound twice to an oxygen. Two of the bonds are to oxygen in this case, as opposed to the linear case. In this case, the two oxygens are different oxygens, but it's still two. And so that's your anomeric carbon. Notice that the anomeric carbon didn't change. It was carbon number one in the linear structure, and it's still carbon number one in the ring structure, and that's always true. So we have identified our, our carbon, or our anomeric carbon. That's helpful in determining whether which anomer is this. Is this the alpha anomer or the beta anomer? And the way you determine which one it is is you identify, again, you identify the anomeric carbon right here, and then you look at the OH attached to the anomeric carbon, and that's right here. There's your hydroxyl group. Notice that it's down. So this is down. The hydrogen up here is up. The OH group is down. So on that anomeric carbon, the hydrogen's up and the OH is down. And so that's important. But we just look really at the OH. The only reason I was showing you that was to indicate what's up and what's down, but the OH is down. And then you look on the carbon that determines the D or L isomer. Um, and in this case, the carbon 5 is the, D, is the one that determines whether this is the D version of the carbohydrate or the L version of the carbohydrate. So over here, this is carbon 5, as identified in the cyclical structure. And you look at the CH2OH group attached to that carbon. And so notice the CH2OH group is up. So you compare the CH2OH attached to the the, the carbon that determines D versus L, and the OH group attached to the anomeric carbon, and you compare them. If one is up and one is down, like we have in this case, this is the alpha, this is the alpha anomer. If one is, if they are both up or both down, doesn't matter which, but if they're both up or, bo or both down, that would be the beta. And let me go ahead and draw the beta version for you. Notice in the second version of the cyclical um, ring structure, the OH that is attached to the anomeric carbon is up. The CH2OH is also up. They're both up. So this would be the beta form. One thing to note here and realize again that the bond that the new bond that was made to form this beta structure is still the same bond that was uh, formed to, the new bond formed to make the alpha structure realize that in natural or living systems when you have the straight chain form here on the left of diidos that it can cyclize to form the beta structure but dynamically that bond can be rebroken the straight chain form can be remade and then it can be recyclized into the alpha form. And so really, these two cyclical structures, the alpha form and the beta form, are in dynamic equilibrium at all times. Um, the alpha form can be made, it can reopen to form the cyclical, or the straight chain version, and then recyclize to form either the alpha or the beta. And so this goes back and forth all the time. So this alpha and beta uh, anomers are actually in dynamic equilibrium with each other because the straight chain can be reformed by reopening that ring structure, at least as a monosaccharide as we showed here. So this structure down at the bottom here, this ring structure, would be called beta D idos, and the one above would be alpha D idos. Alpha D idos and beta D idos are stereoisomers of each other. They're anomers, more specifically, of each other. Um, and so that's what an anomeric uh, isomers look like. They're basically the same molecule where the anomeric uh, carbon has been uh, changed from the alpha form to the beta form. Here are two to practice with, just to determine whether or is this the alpha. So is this the alpha form or the beta form that I'm showing? I've given you two practice ones to try. Pause the video, give it a try, determine whether you think they're alpha or beta, and come back and we'll talk about it. 
Okay, so I'll go through these. The first thing you want to do is identify the um, anomeric carbon. The anomeric carbon on the first one is right here, and I'll highlight the two bonds to oxygen, the two oxygen bonds, and they're those two right there. And now I see my, that my OH group is up. Here's carbon five. That's my D versus L version uh, determinant. CH2OH is attached to it. That's up. So they are both up. So this is beta. So that's the beta anomer of some sugar. On the second one, I do the same thing, except I've rotated this a little bit for you uh, to, to just kind of drive home the principle or concept of what you're trying to do. Um, on this one, again, we find the anomeric carbon, and that anomeric carbon is actually over here. It's bound to the oxygen in OH right there, and also bound to the oxygen of the ring structure. And so I see that the OH is in the up position. Um, because that's carbon 1, um, carbon 2 is here, carbon 3 is here, carbon 4, and there's carbon 5, the one that determines D versus L. There's my CH2OH. It is down. So OH is up, CH2H is down, one's up, one's down. That's got to be the alpha anomer. Okay, so I'll stop there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll post a part two. Uh, I'll go into more detail about this, so if you feel like you need more details. Um, these are um, uh, Pyrenos rings or six-membered rings. Um, sometimes uh, people, uh, they... Uh, Classes start talking about five-membered rings, and they want you to know about the Furanos rings. They look a little bit different, but the analysis is still the same, but they do look different and sometimes cause confusion. So I will get into Furanos in part two um, down the line, um, and I'll post that video um, and post it to YouTube when it is completed. Thanks for watching.